The Alien movies are a four decade old film franchise that has consisted of films that are regarded as classics to some that are completely forgotten about due to the test of time. Over the years, this film franchise has been helmed by some of the greatest working directors of our time, from the likes of Ridley Scott, James Cameron, and even erected David Fincher's directing career. This franchise has been a staple to film for years, yet I haven't seen a single one. So with the release of Alien Romulus this week, I figured I'd dive deep into the cultural phenomenon that is the Alien film and rank them. So, that being said, I'll be ranking all seven Alien releases, including Alien Romulus. However, I'll be leaving out the Alien v Predator movies because we already That's know they just beat anything. the competition. So without further ado, let's dive into the Alien franchise. Yeah, this movie was so intense to watch for the first time. Again, I hadn't seen any of these movies before this video, and going into this one was pretty exciting because of all the hype I've heard my whole life surrounding this movie, and it didn't disappoint. I loved how dark and eerie this movie felt. It truly leaned on the more horror movie vibes than I was expecting. However, I wasn't upset that it leaned on that horror space vibe because I feel like it made it so much more grounded even though it took place in space. The movie follows this space crew who are awakened from their cryo sleep on their way back home to Earth. After getting a distress call from another planet suggesting other potential life forms, the crew find out that the planet is harboring way worse than a normal life form. It's housing xenomorphs, and once the xenomorphs show up, it gets wild. This movie does a fantastic job at building suspense without it feeling boring. Sometimes horror movies lean way too hard on suspense that it doesn't get scary until the very end, where Alien leans on the suspense until halfway through the movie, and once the xenomorph takes over one of the crew members' bodies, it's when the movie becomes becomes much more uneasy. Not saying the suspense leaves entirely, it just gets way more action oriented. I feel like the cast do their jobs well, and for having seven crew members, you get a good sense of who each member is and how they act. However, some characters don't get crazy nuanced backgrounds, but to me, a movie like this doesn't really need that. It's a survival space story, if the villain is threatening enough and the environment is crazy enough, I would root for anyone to survive if they could, and this movie does that really well. Ripley is a really cool character, and I'm sure the development she gets as the film franchise goes on gets even better, but she does a good job here too, and it was fun watching a young Sigourney Weaver kick some ass. The Nostromo set design is beautiful, with every room feeling so contained, and the whole ship having its own personality for a deep space film. The way this movie utilizes practical effects and sets is so awesome too, which makes this film look great to this day. The movie came out 45 years ago, yet looks really good for being four and a half decades old. However, I did notice one thing. The audio started clipping during some scenes. It would sound like this, and sound like this right after, like a really hard cut. The Xenomorph design is grotesquely well made. The design is gross, slimy, and downright scary in some scenes, and I loved it. When the xenomorphs stick to the faces of the crew, it's just downright disgusting, especially when it starts infecting the insides of certain crew members. Shit straight up horrifying. I also thought the twist that the character Ash was a robot tasked with containing the alien without caring about the human astronauts was super interesting, adding some more stakes to an already wild plotline. The last 30 minutes of the movie alone was so goddamn intense, man. Seeing Ripley run around the Nostromo trying to hide from the Xenomorph was making my cheeks clench. Pause. And the final fight where Ripley kills the Xenomorph was pretty cool to see as well. Also, bonus point that Ripley kept the cat alive. The entire movie was a really fun watch and it's pretty impressive that this movie generated six more sequels and is considered a film classic. If I were to throw this on the tier list, I'd give it an A since I don't have any other films to go off of. I'm going to leave it here, but this may be subject to change after watching all the other films. Oh baby, this one is good. I had a feeling that the first two movies were going to live up to the hype, and suffice it to say, they have. After the excellent experience I had with the first movie, it was refreshing to finish this one with as much excitement and satisfaction. This movie picks up right after the first one with Ripley being awakened by another colony of humans in space after 57 years. She finds out that these people planted a human colony on that same planet from before, and they haven't heard back from them. So after just waking up, these people make Ripley go with the legion of soldiers to the planet and save anyone who may be there. Having this movie take place entirely in a different setting was very nice. It was super expansive to the world building to let us be on this planet we only got a glimpse of in the first one. The stakes were raised immensely here too, as the planet consisted of countless xenomorphs instead of the one from the first movie. I enjoyed how this film incorporated way more people into the main storyline and that every character felt way more fleshed out compared to the original crew in the first one too. Characters like Bill Paxton's private 
Private Hudson, Paul Reiser's Carter Burke, and so on, also added to the nuance and complexities of certain character dynamics. I liked the kind of brotherly love and dynamic most of the soldiers shared with each other as well. I will say some of the dialogue from them got a little over dramatic and annoying at some parts, but it didn't take away from the movie enough for me to think it was terrible or anything. I thought the introduction of the little girl who was the sole survivor of the planet colony was nice too, especially how her dynamic with Ripley built over the course of the film. Again, the sets here are just out of this world. You get a look at the advanced technology the colony placed on the planet and how the aliens take it over. The planet has a lot more dynamics to it compared to the first one as well. With this, the sets on the planet are really well made and look stunning, as well as the practical effects used. Seeing the xenomorphs move with more agility, but still remain as visually terrifying as the first movie was awesome to see. Again, the xenomorphs and the egg hatching scenes are just disgusting to look at. Shit tickles the part of my brain that is unease, I'll tell you very much. I really liked Ripley's arc in this movie too. She continues to prove why she is one of the most badass action heroes of the past 100 years because of this movie. Her dynamic with the young girl named Newt was great to watch, seeing her motherly instincts in full effect. I also loved how the first movie's events still left a lingering effect on her too. How she can't sleep without having nightmares, or when she first goes to the planet and hears the xenomorphs again and has flashbacks. It's just so good. Makes that kind of trauma in with some of the most high octane action set pieces of the 80s you've ever seen? And this movie is a straight thrill ride. The last 40 minutes of this movie alone had me locked in completely with all of the shoot 'em up flamethrower, explosion ass action I could ask for. This movie's tone is very different from the first one, but it's what I like a lot about it. Yes, there's still suspenseful scenes, but the shift to a more action oriented style of film works since we know more about the Xenomorphs because of the previous film. So the tension of the unknown is gone, which leaves more room for the action bits, which again are top notch. Throwing this up on the tier list, I'm going S tier. This is a rewatch worthy film for me, and I had a blast watching it from start to finish. Okay, so seeing the Rotten Tomato score for this film after watching it threw me for a loop because this movie has a 45%. What were the critics smoking? Cause I need some of it. I thought this movie was pretty damn good. I'm not sure if this is a crazy take or not. Maybe it's because this film is unfortunately followed up by two of the greatest films ever made. So people expected more, but I don't know, man. I thought this movie was great. For starters, I love the setting this film takes place in. Each film so far has had a distinct setting that differentiates itself from the previous one. And I like that a lot. Seeing the Fury 161 prison wasteland come to life was great. I loved the gritty, worn down look of the place, as well as the darker tone vibe this movie had to it, bringing it back to the roots of the first one a bit. I thought the tone was great in this film too. You can really see how this film inspired Fincher's Seven film, and it was pretty cool to see the building blocks for what that movie would become. Having the xenomorph skulk around the prison while prison inmates get picked off one by one was really fun to watch. The overall set designs and practical effects were done really well here too. This film came out in 1992, so the overall technological advancements can be seen here in terms of practicality. However, this film also utilizes CGI for the first time in the franchise, and let's just say, yeah, it doesn't look good at all. Any xenomorph scene that is CGI based will look bad 9 out of 10 times in this film. Thank the lord it's only used a couple times in the final act, because if the whole movie was like this, it would be a hard watch. But I found the rest of the film utilized the xenomorphs look well enough, and the practical effects for it this time around was really well done. I would have preferred if it was practical the whole time though. The final action scene was really well made too, having Ripley and all of the inmates think of a new solution to kill the xenomorph instead of using guns was a nice touch, making the stakes feel hard harder and new at the same time compared to previous installments. A lot of the characters in this movie I enjoyed a lot. Again, the prisoners' vibe was different compared to the brotherly love of the soldiers and aliens and the more nuanced companionship of friends and workers in Alien. Standouts for me include religious and prisoner leader Dylan, who had a pretty incredible speech near the end of the movie, and Dr. Clemens, who is the only man on this planet to get some play in 20 years. Attaboy Clemens! That's why he's the MVP! Ripley was the most badass she's ever been in this movie. She's the only survivor from the sequel to make it to this planet alive, and this planet happens to be a male-dominated prisoner camp, yet she still stands on business the whole time. Gotta respect it. The twist this time around with her having an alien be in her was cool, and I thought her sacrifice at the end was very well earned. I loved how the final scene of this 
film is her logging off from the log of the first film's finale. I thought that was a really cool full circle kind of moment. However, I do question why the alien inside her took forever to hatch. Like in the first film, it killed Kane pretty quickly. I think it was like a day tops, but in this one, Ripley was moving about the prison for days, I think. Unless the prospect of time is really lost in this film on me, so who knows. Anyways, I'd give it a B tier. Had the movie not utilized CGI so much, I think it would have been remembered more fondly, as well as having some more time to flesh out certain characters without killing them off so quickly. But I'd also say this film holds up when you compare it to the previous two quite well. It's what shocks me the most about the critics' reviews regarding this film, but oh well, on to the next one. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of this one. I'm of the opinion that the third movie had a good enough ending to Ripley's story, so any kind of story that took place after it feels kind of cheap to me. And this film's reasoning for her to even be in this one doesn't make much sense to me anyways. She's supposedly a clone of Ripley from the original trilogy, but is the mother of the xenomorph on board the ship she's on in this film? Yeah. It's kind of confusing. I'd say this film's story is just very convoluted in nature. There's a lot of logic gaps between characters and reasons for why some characters stay when they should have been left behind a long time ago. Also, the whole motherly thing with Ripley and the Xenomorphs is quite confusing too, and like kind of erotic for an alien film. Also, the chemistry between Ripley and all of the other characters in this film was just not it to me. I wasn't a fan of how the oh Walmart God, Soldier Squadron no. from Aliens oh, acted in this film. As much as I like Ron Perlman, this character he played was just annoying as hell to watch. A lot of the shit they say to each other is just absurd sometimes, and comes across as quite goofy. But like, not in a fun way, but in a way that made me bored. Of all these movies, this one was the least interesting one to watch for me. I caught myself checking my phone a lot just to see how much time was left in this film to see when it was over. I especially wasn't a fan of Ripley in this one too. I know she was a clone, so she acts very robotic in emotion, but my god. It felt like I was watching paint dry whenever she was talking to someone. I'll say the standout of this movie was Renona Ryder, who by the middle of the film is announced to be an android. However, it's not saying much because the rest of the cast is just annoying. This film has a lot of quirky camera shots, reminiscent of like Halle Berry's Catwoman or Ben Affleck's Daredevil. And if you're into that, then all power to you. But to me, I kept getting early 2000s superhero movie PTSD flashbacks from this. Especially this scene. The hell are you? The positive things I can say about this film is that it definitely looks the best of the three from like an effects standpoint. The xenomorphs look good, there's some action scenes in here that are pretty cool to watch. Not sure if they got rid of CGI slop xenomorphs entirely in this film, just for practical, but if not then the CGI was barely noticeable, which is a vast improvement over three. Also I will say this movie is insanely violent, so if you like that then you'll enjoy this one. Like some parts of this movie had to be kind of queasy because of the brutal gore this film had, which shocked me quite a bit. But overall, Overall, I don't think this movie needed to be made. I feel like 3 ended Ripley's story so much better, and Resurrection should definitely stay buried amongst the sea of alien sequels. Throwing this one on the tier list, I'm giving it a D. I don't plan on watching this movie, like, ever again. Oh man, this was a breath of fresh air. Coming off of Resurrection, which was a movie I didn't find much enjoyment in, leave it to Ridley Scott to remind me how great of a franchise this truly is. I loved this movie. I loved how the tone of this film resembled the original and that the story even resembled it too. The entire film's horror roots really started to show this time around too, which was really nice. Don't get me wrong, I love the shoot 'em up action stuff, but it was really awesome and refreshing to dive back into the mystery horror roots that erected this franchise to begin with. I feel like the question of who created us as humans posed a very interesting through line for the whole film that made every character's actions have a lot of merit to it. With the original Alien, a lot of the motivations behind the Nostromo launch is that the Wayland Yutani Corporation wanted to keep the Xenomorphs around to use them for benefiting humans, like enhancing their strength, making them immune to toxin. With Prometheus, it adds a lot of layers to those motivations, and we can see how it starts out. You get a glimpse at Wayland himself, who wants to prolong his lifespan, and will take the most exotic chance of getting that wish granted. You see two motivated scientists who want to learn why they were created, by whom, and are super passionate about learning what exists outside of the Earth's solar system. All of these motivations with a slowly unraveling realization that the place they landed has another species that doesn't want them there, plus the alien species, the other people created, that is now attacking everyone and slowly killing them, leading to a really exhilarating two hours of film. Ridley shows his masterful directing chops here. After 33 years since the original, you can see how he's grown 
own as a director, masterfully using suspense to build up an alien species we've already been used to for three decades now, and still finding a way to make it scary and frightening. There's multiple scenes in this movie that make you squirm because of the actions that are happening. The way characters slowly start to lose their optimism for the search as they become frightened of what they've discovered on the moon planet they landed on was awesome. I'd also say this film has a great set of characters in it that are all pretty fun and interesting to watch together. Like the first film, there's clearly standouts that are given more time to shine, but every character felt utilized with none of them being wasted. Clear standouts in terms of characters have to be Michael Fassbender's David, who's an AI tasked with following Guy Pierce's Wayland's orders while on this mission to see this other species. He plays the android part so well and is definitely my favorite droid character with Bishop in Aliens close behind. There's a lot of really well written scenes and dialogue between David and the other characters that kept me hooked in. Another standout was Numi Rapace's Elizabeth Shaw. She has so many stellar scenes in this movie and she felt just like a modern day Ripley. The CGI and modern day look of this film is fantastic. The set pieces are gorgeous and everything looks super realistic. I had no issues with how this film looked or felt. All the intense horror imagery looked incredible, especially every scene that involved an alien. The final action set piece was awesome and this truly felt like a love letter to Scott's 1975 film at heart. Even down to the final recorded message Shaw says to end the film. My name is Elizabeth Shaw, last survivor of the Prometheus, and I'm still searching. Leave it to Ridley to make a film that outscores his own masterpiece. That's why, in my honest opinion, I like this film more than the original, and I'm giving it an S tier behind Aliens. I love the original, don't get me wrong, but this movie really took everything that the first one did and did it better in a modern setting. A christened director who knows exactly how he wants his franchise to look is awesome to witness, and I had a great time with this one. Alien Covenant is the second movie in this prequel set of films, and I thought it was pretty decent. Coming off of Prometheus, which was easily my second favorite film in the franchise, I had a lot of hope going into this one to have a lot of the questions posed in that one to be answered here, and although they were, I wasn't a huge fan of how this film went about it. Having Shaw, the main protagonist and only survivor of the Prometheus launch, get killed off by David off screen bummed me out completely, especially when you replace her with a whole new squadron of people that I just didn't really care for. I thought the question Shaw posed at the end of Prometheus in that she wanted to seek out the people who created humans was awesome and I was extremely excited to see how that would play out between her and David but we don't get any of that here. David used that knowledge to experiment on her and kill her off screen and then we find out David mass spread the virus onto the home planet of those people from Prometheus to create even more weird creature things and then finding out that David was the one to create the xenomorphs that's where I'm a bit indifferent about this decision. I really love the ominous uncertainty of how a creature like the xenomorphs exists in the original Alien movie, but I also think the poetic nature of humans creating androids that create the thing that kills their creator is kind of awesome too. It also helps that Michael Fassbender kills it again as David, but also Walter, a newer model android tasked with overseeing the spaceship Covenant. Again, there's a lot of really good back and forth with David scenes here between characters, especially Walter, where the two androids have meaningful discussions on their creation and how to utilize their abilities. Stuff like that was pretty awesome to watch. However, the inclusion of a new cast of characters on another spaceship that crash lands and slowly starts getting infected is cool, but after seeing it done multiple times and in better ways, it felt pretty repetitive. Don't get me wrong, the scenes are still really awesome to watch, the action is incredibly well done, but it remains to be stated that the ones before this have done it better with better story conviction behind them too. The xenomorph scenes in this one are superb though. Seeing a xenomorph in modern day technology with great CGI was just amazing to witness. Let's just say, looks a lot better than Alien 3. Overall, this movie is pretty good. If it's on the TV, I'd watch it, but it's pretty repetitive and narratively doesn't act on the questions raised in Prometheus in the way that I was expecting. Throwing this on the tier list, I'd give it a B above Alien 3. After watching the movie, I looked up if there will ever be a conclusion to the prequel storyline, and finding out it's been scrapped is kind of hilarious because the irony that you would start a prequel story to your acclaimed series only to not finish that story before it gets to the part that would actually connect to your acclaimed first movie is insane. But hopefully it'll be made someday. I'd like to see David's trilogy conclude somehow.
Give Fede Alvarez all the budget in the world, he deserves it. I just watched Alien Romulus, and man, this shit was incredible. This movie pays a lot of homage to the original Alien, but has a ton of inventive flair to it that makes it stand out on its own. Alvarez is best known for his rendition on Evil Dead and his very underrated thriller, Don't Breathe. And I'm glad he got picked to do the directing for this film because his vision definitely shines through here. There's a ton of thrilling scenes reminiscent of his earlier work that really fit the style of the Alien movies, which is what they're all about. The film follows a ragtag group of young kids looking to make a way out of their planet that's been taken over by Wayland Yutani. In order to do this, they hijack what's left of the remaining Nostromo from the original, and they try and use the cryopods on it to travel to a new planet away from Wayland owned territory. But like all these movies go, it doesn't go according to plan, and the kids find themselves in way over their heads when xenomorphs and aliens start messing with them completely. I'll first start by saying I thought the kids' personalities were really great. It's crazy that changing up the age range a bit can add for a more exhilarating experience, but it truly does. It makes the actions some of them take more believable than, say, a bunch of scientists or company men. All the actors do a great job at embodying their parts, and a huge shout out to Kaylee Spaney, who crushed it as the lead actress Rain Carradine in the film. I'd also like to say that David Johnson's Andy was one of my favorite characters of the whole series. This franchise and their ability to tell great AI character arcs, man, they four for four. A lot of the set pieces and set designs are just absolutely gorgeous. Seeing the Nostromo again after so many films was just a blast from the past, to be honest, and it looked so great. It felt like the 1979 version back in modern day, which was awesome to see. This film is also insanely violent. Like most of these alien films by now, you should expect this, but just in case you were wondering, yeah, there's a ton of scenes in here that make you squirm. I will never get over when a xenomorph hatches out of someone's chest. That shit is one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen in my life. This movie perfectly encapsulates a new generation of alien fans, but also pays a great homage to what came before it. The xenomorph action scenes are amazing, the thrilling and suspenseful face hugger scenes are awesome, and a bunch of great dialogue keep this movie running on all fronts. This movie has you on the edge of your seat the entire time, and I highly recommend you all go check this film out in theaters while you still can. Throwing this up on the tier list, I'm giving it an A. It's a brilliant film, and I hope Fede continues to be the director of this franchise going forward. Aside from Alien Resurrection, all of these films are either top tier or just good, and from a franchise perspective, that's pretty insane to see. It was a blast diving into the world that Ridley Scott created, and it's pretty cool to see his vision still stay relevant today, and with this many good to great films. I'll also say the fact that every film features a well-written female protagonist who isn't patronizing to its audience is incredible. I fell in love with a lot of the characters here. To have so many strong, independent, but flawed female characters on screen was awesome to see. I now know why so many people respect Ripley, and it's so deserved. Again, I highly encourage you guys to check out Alien Romulus if you can because you will not regret it. It is an awesome time. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Comment down below what you agree with and what you don't. Let me know what your favorite Alien film is. While you're down there, you should hit that like and subscribe button too since YouTube likes when you do that and it'll push this video out to more people like you who enjoy these kinds of videos, which will make me happy. Anyways, that's all for me today, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.